corn crop is not a grassland just because corn is technically grass. And a tree farm is not a forest just because they planted a tree there. And so the other big thing as we look into the distance, you can see the hard edges. And hard edges are not a thing in a natural ecosystem. But around here, if you look all around us, everywhere there's hard edges between every unit. Forests don't grow in squares. That's, that's not how forests grow. There's a bunch of us that live out here. Um, there's streams full of salmon that are already being negatively impacted by logging practices. There's amphibians. Um, and then there's the fact that we actually need all of those other plants on the landscape. We're looking at a situation where probably about 90% of our native forest ecosystem in Oregon has been impacted by logging at some point. sliding land and slumping and, and, and erosion leading into the streams um, because tree farms can't hold, hold the earth together the, the way a healthy forest can. One day about five years ago I just randomly turned onto this road. I had no idea um, where it went or what it was. I'd actually asked some neighbors and, and most folks hadn't been up here. Um, it's not a well-marked road. Um, and I came up and, and the first thing I saw was the BLM properties lower on the road and thought, you know, this is interesting. There's real fresh logging here, but it's, um, you know, it's not bad. There's all these old trees left. There's, there's you know, pretty much full cover as far as canopy closure. Um, this is really cool. And at first I was really excited to see that um, on that portion of the, the ridge. And then I came up further and got into this private land, uh, you know, square mile here that we're in. And, and came across this clear cut that we're standing in now, um, which at the time had just happened. Um, there were actually still signs for active operations, so I only looked at it from up on the road. And um, I've come back regularly since to take pictures of what's going on to see um, what the stream in this particular clear cut is doing, which has been drying up. The first time I came up here, the stream did still have water in it, um, actually even in the late spring in a dry spell. Um, but as I've come up here more and more, I've been able to take in more of the landscape and see um, that the really unfortunate thing is that you know, there's a whole bunch of these clear cuts right around here and that uh, Fish Creek below us is, is heavily threatened by clear cutting. It's true, uh, Oregon is still pretty green, but if you compare uh, the kinds of trees that are growing and how they grow, uh, you see a totally different ecology. There's one type of tree planted out there. Uh, there's no other food sources for wildlife. Now down in the bottom lands, there's big enough rivers that we can see some diversity and it's almost all alder and you can see that where there are other trees, you can see them clearly right now. But one of the most important thing is the, the, the dead trees. And like looking out at the plantation land, the tree farms, what you'll see is that there's not standing dead trees, there's not big logs on the ground that are dead, um, and, and there's not trees that are dying. That's what a forest is, uh, you know, is a, is a cycle of life. And so without dead trees, without standing dead trees, which we call snags, without, without downed wood, the trees that are laying on the ground, uh, we don't have moisture retention, we don't have soil rebuilding, and we don't have wildlife habitat. And so what happens now though, we don't have these healthy natural forests along creeks like this. This is Fish Creek here. And multiple times in the last two generations, this place has been logged and cut over. And so there's not these big old Douglas firs that are left that can die and tip over and fall into the river to do their job, which is to slow down the water, 
so that sediments and rocks can drop out of the water, which not only cleans the water so that it's more clear for fish to navigate in and smell in and, and, and hunt in, but it also builds up these gravel beds that they need to lay their eggs, which is exactly what's gonna be happening in this part of the stream. So the unfortunate thing is that these streams don't have the trees next to them that we need in order to fall in naturally. And so these large woody debris placements like this one here, um, these trees have actually been brought in from somewhere else and to be put here because they're not here to fall in naturally. Um, what, what bothers me about this kind of work is, you know, taxpayers fund millions of dollars of work like this in Oregon every year which is wonderful, it works. Uh, large woody debris in rivers brings salmon back to streams. It helps salmon numbers and it's a good thing. But what bothers me about it is we're right below the clear cut we were standing in just a few minutes ago. It's actually just up here. And the water that's flowing through that clear cut and heating up and getting muddy, it's pouring into this same stream. And so we're spending millions and millions of dollars to do salmon restoration to undo the past damage of historical logging. But at the same time, modern logging practices are continuing to undo the work that, that really provides the stream health that those fish need. This could be a great project. This could be something where ultimately we end up with a rehabilitated ecosystem. But if we don't take care of the whole system and we just focus on the small pieces down here at the bottom, ultimately we're not really doing the work we need for those fish to thrive. <laughs>